How we doing, everybody? Welcome back to NYCFC Fireside. We're talking about this upcoming home opener for the club, and we're excited, man. We got to get back in that win column. We got a draw. We got a loss on the books already, and Inter Miami is not an easy club to take down. They've won their first two games. Going to be difficult, but this team is good enough. We know NYCFC have some good players. We got Santi back. We have some good talent. Hopefully, they can figure out better ways to use Talis Magno, and we're excited, man. This is a really good opportunity for NYCFC to show that they have not fallen off. That even though we've lost Tatis, we've lost Maxi Morales, we've lost um, Collins, we are still a good team and we can win games against good opponents. So I'm excited to see what we can do. But Juan Carlos, tell me a little bit about what, what you're feeling uh, for this upcoming game. We'll dive into our uh, expectations and of course what we intend to do with this channel and our hopes for the upcoming year and for the foreseeable future. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think for me, my side, I think we just want to see more improvement. I know the fan base is like a bit flustered about how we've been playing or like who's been playing what or Talis Magno not doing this or not doing that. I think, you know, I view the home opener as a way to be like, you know, like scratch off, you know, playing at home is obviously different, you know, you get the fan support. So it's going to be like a way to be like, you know, this is going to be what the team is going to look like because I think in previous seasons we've made uh, the Bronx like our fortress so like, you know. Yeah, we, we don't have the best way record, but whenever we end up playing at the Bronx, it's a new team, it's a new vibe. So, like, you know, as you say, hopefully, you know, they get the best of Talis Magno finally in the third match. And, uh, yeah, hopefully a win, because that's what we want, like, playing at home wins. <laughs> That's true. We definitely want home wins. And the weather's going to be a little bit spotty on Saturday, so it's going to be interesting kind of dynamic to see how they operate. It's going to be a little snowy, a little bit wet. Maybe the field, the pitch is going to be a little bit slippery. So we'll see how they kind of operate uh, with those variables in play. But I'll ask you this. Who's got to step up in this game? Who's got to be the catalyst for this NYCFC club? I mean, it's always going to be Magno. But I say Santi is the one I'm looking at in this game to really step up, right? He's the one, and I'd love to see them get Magno back on the left wing, on, on the wing, and have Santi be pushing. Um, that's kind of how I see this unfolding. Got to have that good combination, Santi, Gabriel, and obviously um, Talis Magno. That trio there has got to be leading the offensive attack and, and hoping to get some shots on goal, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, I think whenever you get a new signing, you want the instant impact, but like, you know, I think with the first full week of training, yeah, he knows the guys, but like, you know, proper training, proper time to actually work things out, like getting to know the players, getting like the connection back. So I believe, yeah, uh, Santi is the main guy to look for. I mean, the teams are going to be like, yeah, he's going to be the main guy. So I think he's going to be a target anyway. So if the coaching staff has worked out ways to actually go around them and like find alternatives, like, yeah, but like, as you said, Santi is the main guy and like hopefully he can not step up but like deliver, you know, kind of getting us back to what he used to do before he left the club, before everything else happened, you know, so yeah. Santi is the main guy. I mean, Santi is a catalyst, right? He is the one that you want, taking yeah. possession of the ball, pushing it up He's the field. Creator, yeah. He's the creator, right? He's the creator. And obviously you got Richard Ledesma kind of assimilating with this team eventually. Hopefully he can offer something on the offensive side as well as a <laughs> midfielder, but we don't know when that'll happen, right? Well, he's, he's a bit younger from the rest of the team. So, like, if he breaks into the team the way we expect him to, like, yeah, that's great. But, like, you know, if he ends up, like, being at the bench, you know, because we got to remember that he's coming off from a lot of injuries. We're not saying that he's going to be injury prone, but, like, you know, like, we got to have those, like, facts, like, factored in, you know. He's going to, he's trying to come here and, like, kind of revitalize his career because, like, he hasn't been having that much starts for PSV, so like we'll see what happens. Hopefully, you know we we can be the club that actually like brings him back to his best uh, form, best shape. So, yeah, hopefully he ends up arriving and making a good impact. Well, we definitely need offensive support. And look against this against this team, this Inter Miami squad. At the end of the day. You're going to have to outscore a team like this, right? They, they put goals on the board. They scored four goals, 2-0, I think, was their first. Their, or their second game, they won 2-0. Maybe the first one was 2-0 as well. Um, it was. Both games, they win 2-0. So their defense is solid. We need to put goals on the board against a team like this because, obviously, they've got a solid defense. They have DeAndre Gedlin playing right back. Maybe not the best uh, U.S. men's national team player, but he's certainly a good MLS player, and he's fast, um, and he has experience, right? Obviously, a former Newcastle guy. So... You love to see exactly um, what this team is going to try to do. Santi has chemistry with a lot of the NYCFC guys. Talis Magno, um, Tiago Andrada, you know, of course, Gabriel Pereira. The, these guys are definitely full of um, chemistry and experience together, and that's what we're hoping 
to happen. James Sands obviously comes back chemistry as well. The defense looked tremendous. I mean, significantly better than the first week, right? The first game. Um, Kufre looked good. He had a couple of nice opportunities. Um, obviously, this this team needs to kind of round out, but it's going to take time. This was always the goal was to give this team time, get some of our prominent players back, and allow them to build that chemistry as a unit and not just between two or three guys. So I'll ask you this. What like has to happen on defense, right? Who's got to step up? I mean, Brian Kufra obviously is a big one, but you know, is, is Ilenich going to play again? How do you see them kind of uh, utilizing these guys? Well, it all, all depends if like, you know, we got to look for the injury report prior, prior to the match. We don't know how Tavon Gray has evolved from his injury in the first game, but like, listen, <clears throat> if we continue to see what we saw against um, Chicago and we see Ilenich and we see Kufra like continue, you know, if you if you give the players like continuity and like, consistency, they're able to like build the chemistry that you want. I think the defense is good good as it is. Like, listen again, everything takes time, and if you give that lineup or like at least that back line enough time to actually repeat week in and week out, like you're gonna see guys like again, Kufred cool might be the guy stepping up. Like you never know, cause like at the end of the day, we have like two solid like center backs with uh oh my gosh Shannon and um Thiago Martin so like you know at the end of the day it's who like out of the new players in defense who's gonna like compliment them if you're able to get a connection uh with Shannon I think we'll be set but like in defense I'm not worried about anything again the attack is the main issue but like in defense Barras has been doing good the defense again looked again uh pretty solid so Again, we'll see what happens, but I'm not worried about the defense as much. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fair assessment. You know, the defense, maybe not so much. Mm-hmm. Obviously, a goalie, Barraza has been solid. I've been totally fine with his performance yeah, up to this point. Solid. You know, he's not the most, like, physically yeah. imposing goalkeeper I've ever seen, but mm-hmm. he gets the job done. Good positioning, good hands, yeah, good. and he's smart. He's got a high IQ for the position. I mean, I'm a former goalie, so, like, and I'm not the biggest guy. I'm pretty short. So I kind of <laughs> understand, like, when yeah, you don't have this, like, six seven Thibaut Courtois-type wingspan, you have to just be excellent mm-hmm. positioning. You know, um, one of the guys that stands out, obviously one of the best of all time, Icar Casillas, not a big guy. You know, mm-hmm. really, really just tremendous positioning. He understood the game well, um, and he put himself in a position to make saves, and I think that's what really separated him from the rest. And Barraza seemingly doesn't have this Sean Johnson wingspan, but he's got the positioning to go with it, right? He knows, yeah. He, that's the thing. He knows the back line. Like, yeah, like you said, you got to know your strengths. You got to know your weaknesses. Yeah, he might not be the tallest. He might not be, you know... Again, the most physically like imposing player, but like he knows that positioning is his like strength. So like, we gotta again, time. Like I think third episode, you gotta give him time. You gotta give him time. You can't really go at him and like, hey, let's give freeze a chance because like he like didn't catch a corner or something like that. No man, you gotta give him time. You have to give him time ultimately, and I think that they're they're not going to make a change now. They want to give these guys chemistry and, and, and the time to actually build, yeah. so it's essential, right? That's, but mm-hmm. right now we're looking at yeah. NYCFC team that is is currently in a rebuilding phase. They're not situated. Mm-hmm. They're not they're not strong at all points. But getting Santi back should be a mm-hmm. significant um, addition. Obviously, he didn't play much last week, so uh, we're looking at him to really take on a bigger role against Inter Miami. And, and they're not going to expect this, right? They're watching the first two games. They probably look at the film. And they say, "All right, you know, Magno seems to be out of position. He's not really doing much up top. Uh, Gabriel Pereira's probably been our best player offensively up to this point. He's the one making a lot of the runs. Obviously, a little bit more yeah. composed, getting some good chances on goal. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you know. Okay, so I'll ask you this: If Pereira is playing right wing, and San, let's say Talis Magno plays, I guess, as the nine. He's up top. I, how do you see this unfolding? Do you mm-hmm. think that Magno moves back to left wing and Santi kind of fills that striker role, or do you think he's playing center or attacking mid? You want to know what I think is going to happen? Uh, and I saw, I don't know who, but I always like to give credit, but like some, somebody mentioned that, you know, the first game we saw Magno as a nine, the second game we saw GP as a nine. So, like, what if we see... Um, Thiago Andrade has a nine in this third game, so that kind of gives like the team a way to see how the three attacking players like behave as a nine. Like yeah, on paper, uh, Talis Magno was a nine in the second game, but like who ended up making all the movements and all the runs as a nine and GP. So like I wouldn't be surprised if they're actually going to rely on uh, Thiago Andrade to actually be the nine, and like again keeping um, Talis Magno on the wing. 
Yeah, so we actually what talked you about, about this. We talked about this recently, um, Thiago Andrade being that striker, you know, being that guy up top. The only problem mm -hmm. I have with it is that he does not like to use his left foot. You know, we saw that in the opportunity in game mm -hmm. one where he cuts it. He has basically an open goal. You take shots. If you have mm -hmm. an open slot, you got to put that home. You can't pass that into three guys off balance, a bobbling ball to freaking Matthias Pellegrini and hope that, and hope that thing is going to go in. Mm -hmm. You need to be aggressive, and he's got to be committed to that left foot. He's got to take the shots. He's got to be aggressive, and I think that's what's going to make him a better striker striker is being like decisive mm -hmm. with his decisions you know he's got to be sure about things he, he seems a little bit off you know he seems like he doesn't want to take the shot or he's like a little bit unsure of himself got to be confident you know what i mean yeah yeah i mean and, and again it could be like we could see gp as a nine because it worked last week like tap into that winning formula or like that working formula and make it better like yeah we might not again it's only like my assumption that they're going to try and make uh tiago andrade the nine but like Listen, if I'm the coach and if I saw that GP can make the runs, if GP can score with enough, you know, with, with enough help, like why not make him the nine and like to uh, make uh, Thales Magno the winger? And like again, we have Santi now, so like there's more uh, chances and more connections and more ways to like build plays with him on the field. So yeah. Absolutely. But, you know, I think this game is a big one for us. It's gonna, it's really going to show us a lot of what our weaknesses are, right? Because Inter Miami is a good club, mm -hmm. um, obviously coming off two consecutive wins. They haven't let up a goal yet this season. If NYCFC comes out mm -hmm. in this game and wins or at least puts up a good fight, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tell us a lot about uh, what we're made of. So I'm certainly excited about that. Uh, but Juan Carlos, let's let's take a look at what we are doing here. Let's take a look at what we are <laughs> going to be doing on the MICFC Fireside Podcast social media channels. You know, we're going to be doing a lot of good stuff in the near future, and hopefully, everyone um, is following along and enjoying the process with us because we're, as we build out this channel. But I'll ask you this before I kind of give you my answer: What do you want to get out of this? What do you hope for this channel to become, and why do you think this is going to be such an awesome thing for MICFC fans to enjoy for a very long time? I mean, listen. With any project, you want your project and you want your vision to build. Like at the end of the day, we want to give the the team the coverage that it deserves. We want fans to actually have more like outreach and another outlet to actually like look at another point of view or, of how the team works. And like you know, everyone has a different perspective. So you know, if we're able to give another like point of view and another perspective it's great I mean because again the team is actually going towards a new chapter <clears throat> like we spoke about last week and like the more <clears throat> the more the, the more uh, outlets that you know cover the team the better content we have and like hopefully we end up being one of the best and you know my end goal personally is going to be uh, 2026 the World Cup I think that's my major goal and like you know of course helping the team build up and like you know who knows what happens down the road but like for me personally it's being at the world cup me too i would love to be at the world cup and do all these things. i mean this is going to be <laughs> awesome right like we have micfc the public yeah. um plans were just announced i think today for the stadium they have some of the things kind of unfolding now but look if you're new to this channel if you're new to esm and myself I'll give you a little bit of insight into who I am, right? So I built ESM, blood, sweat, and tears, hard work. This is what we do here, right? We grind, we do the hard at work, we put in the effort. Juan Carlos, same way. Met this guy, second I knew, second I met him, I knew he was a grinder just like myself and he was passionate about what he does. And I think that that bleeds through for everything that we do here is that when you come to consume this type of content, you're getting the best of what we can offer. You're getting everything. We're gonna hit the, the team on all different channels, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you know, everything. So every demographic, everyone's going to have a piece of the pie. And we want you guys to be a part of this, right? We want you guys to be giving us questions, giving us ideas, thoughts. We want to do some cool things in person um, eventually. And of course, as the team builds and continues to do some really fun stuff, we're going to be involved with them. You know, we're going to be doing some really cool content ideas and executing some really cool strategies with the team. You, we want to do some unique stuff that maybe nobody else has done before. And I think that level of content is going to be fun to experience. And we want to do some stuff that, makes us uncomfortable and it's that's all about what growing is you know <laughs> being uncomfortable that's how you grow that's how you expand your talents and that's gonna allow us to bring you the best possible content that we possibly can so i'm excited i know juan carlos is excited but i'll let you uh get back in here i feel like you have one more thing to say <laughs> i mean <laughs> no i mean if anything it's this is an episode where i like give thanks as well you know all the other outlets have been really welcoming you know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for their support. Like, if you get to listen to Post90Pod, um, Blue Balls, NYCFC, 
Blue Seed Radio. So like all those guys are just like a huge inspiration, a huge way of like, you know, bringing me here like to you guys and to actually like you said like tap into like some things that we might not be used to and we might be like scared to do so like you know it's all about growing and yeah let's see what happens and again hoping that you guys support the project and let us grow. Yeah. We're going to make it really easy for everyone to support this project. We're going to be doing some fun stuff. We're going to have some great content coming out, and it's only up from here. So I appreciate everyone tuning in to the latest NYCFC Fireside episode. A lot more to come. Let's go freaking New York City Football Club this weekend. We want to beat the crap out of the Inter-Miami squad who okay. might, may be lost list right now. They haven't lost yet, but I'd, be, I'd love to give them their first L of the season. Um, but as always, my friends. Yeah, and they're going to come strong yeah. because of the... Because of the um, the playoff, right, remember, right. <laughs> last season we, we, we knocked them out, so they're going to be with a revenge kind of spirit, so we got to be careful, but it's a home opener, hoping to see you guys over there, and yeah. Absolutely. Well, Juan Carlos, Follow yeah, Juan Carlos will be there, <laughs> exclusive content as always, we've got you guys covered on all fronts, we'll have... Um, amazing stuff every single week, every single day. So keep in touch. Make sure to follow, subscribe as always, and we'll catch you guys on the next NYCFC Fireside episode.